We're now ready to start our study of simple harmonic motion. We'll study the equations for a harmonic oscillator, look at energy of simple harmonic motion, we'll consider pendulums, both simple and physical pendulums, phase angles, and angular simple harmonic motion, which will get us into some interesting analyses. So let's dive into that. Now, most of you are are already familiar with what we call simple harmonic motion. So we're gonna just summarize this real briefly and get to the equation analysis as fast as we can. So periodic motion, something that repeats itself over, this, over a given period, results from a restoring force. So the net force is opposite the displacement, the displacement really from the equilibrium position where it wants to be. So a spring mass system sitting there, displace it, the net force is the restoring force. Now if the restoring force has this kind of characteristic, where the force is proportional to the displacement, then it's a linear restoring force. And since it's a restoring force, it's restoring back to the equilibrium position, which it's displacing from, so F is equal to minus Kx. So as we go toward the right, if we say pull a spring to the right, it pulls back to the left. I'll summarize that again on the next slide. So this is the correct solution for springs and really close for pendulums. If you don't displace a pendulum through too large of an angle, it's a pretty good approximation. So we have horizontal spring systems like this, a mass, the spring constant k plus and minus a for amplitude x is equal to zero we have a pendulum vertical spring all essentially the same thing so k is the spring constant and plus or minus a is the amplitude of vibration e so let's consider the horizontal spring situation the restoring force is simply the spring on the mass and that's going to be the net force so here's what the actual, we could say, vector force looks like. It is, in fact, minus kx. Because as we mentioned, the spring is pulling in the opposite direction of the displacement. Displacement to the right, the spring pulls to the left. It's the opposite direction, so f is equal to minus kx. Now, so what is the situation then for the vertical spring? Well. The restoring force is the force of the spring on the mass, but we're gonna subtract off the weight. Why? Because the spring, which if we do a free body force diagram, we see it's got gravity, gravitational tug, and spring force acting. And the spring force really has to overcome the weight before there's any net force, say upward in this case. So the restoring force is the spring force minus the weight. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, equations for SHM. We start with the spring force, which is also called the restoring force. This is all for a horizontal spring consideration at this point, just to simplify the cons the, our considerations and come up with a basic equation for a harmonic oscillator and some harmonic motion. It's also the FSHM force. And that's equal to F, so all those are like synonyms, right? And if we're lazy, we can just write F. So that's what we're going to do for now. So when I write F, I'm considering that to be the sum of the forces, which is just the spring in a, on a horizontal spring mass system. And that's equal to minus Kx, because that is the spring force. So F is also equal to Ma. And so we're going to equate those. Ma is mdvdt, which is md squared x dt squared. And that's equal to minus kx. And so we have d squared x dt squared is equal to minus k over mx. That is the equation for a harmonic oscillator. And this form will be referred to again and again. We're going to do some more analysis on that and solve it and it will come up again with angular simple harmonic motion and it comes up in e and m as well this this basic form now for the kinematics of shm 
the force is not constant. The force varies. If the force varies, again, it's minus kx, right? So it's not constant. If that force varies, then the acceleration is not constant. So we can't use the uniform acceleration equations. We're going to have to do a little more heavy-duty mathematical analysis on this. Eep. Well, the math really isn't going to be that heavy-duty here because we're going to use what's called the reference circle to get a conceptual understanding and also mathematical description of this kind of motion. And what it's going to consist of is considering, a cir considering circular motion, which is two-dimensional motion, and think of this being uniform circular motion, an object in uniform circular motion. We're going to have a flashlight up here above shining down and projecting the shadow of the object in this motion. We're going to project the shadow of that down onto the x-axis. So it's two-dimensional to one-dimensional projection. When we do that, when we make that projection, the shadow going back and forth will be simple harmonic motion. So that's a, that's a beautiful thing. So here it is, the circular motion object at some particular point in time and space. And the radius is also the amplitude. If you think about it, the amplitude is from here, the zero point, the equilibrium position, to the outer edge as the SHM goes back and forth. So R is the same thing as A. So that's kind of nice. <clears throat> so the projection of the object here is right there. So how much is that? Well, it's A cosine of theta. So that's our position. X is A cosine of theta. Now, let's do velocity. We're at the same point, and in uniform circular motion, we know that the velocity is constant. It's the, I'm going to call it the circular motion velocity, which is also V tangential. But not all of this tangential velocity is projected along the x-axis, obviously. So let's see how much is. Well, it's that much. So we have theta here again. And so at this particular position, the velocity is minus Vc sine of theta. So Vc sine of the angle gives us this. And since it's directed to the left, while the position is to the right, we're going to call it negative. So minus Vc sine of theta. And in circular motion, you know that Vc is actually omega r. So we could put, we will see that this becomes omega r here. Now finally, acceleration. Same place. Now the acceleration is only radial in circular motion. But that's an actual physical acceleration. So the component in the x direction is minus a sub c, the, the radial or centripetal acceleration, cosine of the angle. So that is the component of acceleration. Obviously, when the, when the object is out here, the acceleration toward the center is this entire a radial. And that's going to be the a and the x. It's going to be maximum at that point, which you already know to be true from obvious conceptual understanding of the fact that the spring is stretched the most when it's at the maximum x displacement or the the amplitudes so a radial is a circular or centripetal which is v squared over r and again since v is equal to omega r this is going to be omega squared r squared over r which is just omega squared r so this omega squared r will replace the a sub c in our set of equations describing the position, velocity, and acceleration of SHM. Eep. Well, we get a couple of very useful results from this unit circle analysis projecting uniform circular motion into one dimension. We have that A is equal to minus AC cosine of theta. And AC is equal to omega squared R because it's centripetal, which is v squared over r, which is omega squared r squared over r. And then you divide by r, and one of the r's goes away. So we got omega squared r cosine of theta. That's the acceleration. But r is equal to a, as we discussed in the previous slide. That is the amplitude. So we go from a circle of radius r to the amplitude is that same radius r. So we can 
call that a cosine of theta, which is just x. So now we have that the acceleration is equal to minus omega squared x. But acceleration is equal to sum of f over m. And sum of f is minus kx. So we'll divide that by m, and we got minus kx over m. And you see x on both sides, so happily that goes away. And we get the very important and useful result that omega is equal to square root of k over m. So that, again, will be really useful, that form, angular velocity and angular frequency, which I'll explain just a little more here. So the projection of a point in UCM onto the x-axis in 1D is just like simple harmonic motion of a mass hooked to a spring going back and forth. Omega is the same for both of those scenarios. Omega, a circle, the angular velocity of a circle, but it's the same rate at which it oscillates back and forth. So it's like from the center, and go pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, and going through its oscillation. So there's an there's a angular velocity of that operation, just like there's an angular velocity of regular circular motion. But the angular velocity of the SHM can be thought of as angular frequency. The period equals t, and it's the same for both scenarios. So the angular velocity, radians per second, and angular frequency are the same thing. But the angular frequency that we're talking about here is radians per second, not hertz, not cycles per second. A cycle has two pi radians. So the point in circular motion moves two pi radians in period t. And we get omega equals 2 pi over t. So, and notice that's not dependent on the amplitude. Now, omega, 2 pi over t. So, let's say that in circular motion, you go 2 pi radians in period t. Let's just call t1. And we have 2 pi radians in one second. It gives an angular velocity of 6.28 radians per second. Hopefully that all makes sense. But at the same time, the frequency is also 2 pi radians per second because it goes through its entire 2 pi of oscillation in one second. 6.28 radians in one second, which is 2, 2 pi. So we have that frequency in hertz, you know, cycles per second, not in radians per second, it's omega over 2 pi. So in the situation we just discussed, we had 2 pi radians in one second. So omega, the, the angular frequency, is 2 pi radians per second. So if you call this angular frequency 2 pi radians per second divided by 2 pi, we have 1 cycle per second. So 1 cycle per second is 2 pi radians per second. So this idea of velocity and frequency <clears throat> are used similarly and they really mean the same thing in this context angular velocity angular frequency omega so i don't want you to get confused on that i may have confused you already but this thing then is one over two pi times omega so the frequency is one over two pi there it is times omega Omega we just discovered was square root of k over m from our unit circle analysis. And thus, here's frequency of simple harmonic motion. Period is 1 over frequency. So, period is 2 pi square root of m over k. You're all familiar with this form. You've seen it before, but you've never seen it derived before. Now you know where it comes from.